2019 Canine Companion for Independence graduation. My name is Margaret Fife, and I'm the Executive Director for Canine Companion for the North Fox Foundation. And I like to always ask before we get started, who is here for the first time today? Raise your hand. Huge round of applause. Well, I just want to give you all a very warm welcome to the Canine Companion for the Independence, and thank you for being here today. Um, as you go through the ceremony today, um, you will learn more about Canine Companions and their mission. We are going to today have 75 new human canine teams matching across the country to start their new life with greater independence. And at this graduation ceremony, it's time to learn, in addition to that, we have 53 dogs matriculating to professional training. And during the ceremony, you will learn more about how Canine Companions changes lives through our mission to provide assistance dogs free of charge to adults, children, and veterans, and provides the follow-up care for the life of the partnership. Each of us will see firsthand the power of the human canine bond as our students are matched on the streets today in December. This week is International Assistance Dog Week, which was created to recognize all of the devoted, hardworking assistance dogs helping individuals mitigate their disabilities. As an innovator of assistance dogs, Canine Companions started when one person saw how animals in other countries were helping people. This concept was brought to our home office and abroad, literally right about where we are in Florida right now. And from this was the hope that dogs could assist people with physical needs. The first dog, Abdul, was matched in 1976, and over 40 years later, Canine Companions has saved nearly 6,300 life-changing assistance dogs. And as the largest assistance dog organization in the country, we strive to inspire other organizations to do the same and inspire them to also match assistance dog dogs. The power of a dog has been written about and quoted hundreds of times. Some of my favorites include, quote, dogs are not our whole life, but they make our lives whole. Or another one, quote, a dog is the only person that can mend a fractured bone. And then, quote, to err is human, to forgive is human. And of course, you have to say, quote, happiness is the best medicine. You have to do that. They're, these are all great quotes, but really, there are not words to explain what these dogs do and how we connect to them as humans. Right now, in this very room, there are likely hundreds of dogs in this room. Just, you might not even notice them if you're quietly sitting in this room waiting for the next way that they can help. Take a minute and look around the floor and look at all of the dogs that are in here. It's truly incredible. They go unnoticed, and again, they're all patiently waiting for their human partner, their breeder caretaker, their puppy raiser, their graduate, to let them know how they can help next. This could be as simple as comforting their puppy raiser when they have had a bad day, or as transformative as encouraging a child to find their voice and say their very first word. This can also be as important as being ready to alert if a graduate has fallen and needs assistance, or for a fertility dog, as powerful as helping someone feel at peace taking their last breath. person in an office and abroad saw the connection with a cute little Eastern German snip, um, a breeder um, that dogs have to humans and matched it with a purpose to change people's lives and we are all at work best if we will. This is truly incredible. Um, and so, yes. to make 
sure that we put into our vision so much um, so that you continue to make our mission possible. Our greeter churches are happy to embrace graduate staff, generous donors, the National Board of Directors, our Northwest Regional Board of Directors, volunteers who are supporting our mission to unleash the potential of each magical piece of software, each trail ride, each wet nose, and loving puppy dance. We couldn't do it without you. So thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Sorry. It's our great pleasure and privilege to be partnered with Center for Trails for Independence. Uh, Subaru is, they have a great program called Share the Love where they pick a few charities, a few national charities, and when people purchase cars, they're able to select one of those charities to donate to. And we as a dealer are allowed to choose two hometown charities. And we focus all of our efforts by only choosing one charity, which is Canine Companions for Independence. <laughs> so yes, we feel very fortunate and we thank probably some of you who bought cars during that time and of course chose Canine Companions for Independence. Our team, John Bruno, the general sales manager, Jay, one of our uh, salespeople, and they help our, our clients, when they're not sure which charity to choose, they generally have an idea of which is the best one to choose. So we have a check for over $35,000. That comes from... <laughs> that comes from Subaru of America and our clients choosing Canine Companions for Independence, and then also the Hansel Auto Group. So we're thrilled, it's a great organization, we love what you do, this is one of my favorite events to attend, and it's uh, always super, super special, so thank you very much. years, raising over $150,000 through the Share the Love campaign that we just heard about and sponsorship for our sister Share the World on Tap. And just so you understand what that means, that is enough for 15 students to go through our two-week campaign at On Tap that culminates with this graduation and product giveaway. So that's a huge deal. And then on top of that, if that's not enough, uh, they also include us in the events that they have for outreach purposes the costume uh, contest that they have and their meet owner um, seminars that they do. And they also include us in our, their marketing, which for a nonprofit is worth its weight in gold, to be honest. And then in addition to that, they, they gave us a car to use for <laughs> our graduate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're able to use that vehicle to go do graduate visits, meet with donors, um, do field trips and stuff like that. So we're just very, very grateful and um, just thank you very much. Oh, I'm like, where did they go? Thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> and now I would like to invite Esther Molina, the director of our breeding program to the stage to do breeder presentations. Good afternoon, everybody. Will the greeters being presented please join me to the right of the stage. Make your way up, please. At the last graduation, I talked about the canine companions trifecta, the heart, the science, and the experience, all of which bring us to this day today, graduation day, a very special day. The science represents our veterinarian research teams, which allow us to place healthier dogs. The experience of our instructors through our comprehensive apprentice program creates the magic of the match. 
Today I want to focus on the heart, the heart which represents our volunteers, your commitment, your versatility, your patience, all of which we could not do without. Thank you, guys. <laughs> if we add our donors, now I would call that a superfecta. Volunteer puppy raisers and breeder caretakers embrace the unknown, all of the unknowns, and as you can imagine, with puppies, there are many unknowns. We don't have to go into detail. Not to mention the energy required to fulfill the eight weeks of puppies or the 18 months of raising a puppy, and sometimes you do both. I said to a breeder caretaker today as I was smiling, I wish there was something like your cars filled up now with supplies, dog food, or each other's dogs to help each other out with some of those transportation. Finally, it's true that most people learn about canine companions and inquire about getting involved after meeting one of you. Today we celebrate you as well. We thank you and we appreciate you. Our volunteers, you are the heart of Canine Companions. Let's see the hands of all of my breeder caretakers. I'd like to just see where you are and thank you again for your commitment to Canine Companions. And now let's meet some of our new breeders. My nickname Stake here, Essie the Third. Please make your way to center stage. <laughs> Essie is a lab golden cross female. She was raised by Carly and Hazel Kermer with Stephanie Wilson and the Folsom Women's Facility. Essie's breeder caretakers are now Carly and Hazel staying on. This is their first breeder. Carly has raised 12 puppies. And for Hazel, that means she's been a puppy raiser her whole life. Impressive. Carly is also the contract trainer for the Gold Rush chapter of Canine Companions. <laughs> and I remember when Carly was just an apprentice trainer herself, and Carly has been helping prepare puppies for matriculation for the last 20 years. <laughs> and for Folsom Women's Facility, Essie was their 16th puppy. Thank you, Team Essie. Make your way to the stage, Phoenix the Fifth. Phoenix is a female golden retriever. When she made it, she was also stuck in traffic. <laughs> Phoenix was raised by Mindy Hurd and Angela Jackson Brunning of the Southwest region. They drove here today just to do this. Mindy has raised four puppies. Angela has raised five puppies. Presenting Phoenix today is her co-caretakers, Sharon and Bill Mosbau. Now, Sharon shared with me that she has just whelped her 151st puppy since starting. <laughs> and as co-caretakers, Sharon agrees to share responsibilities with the Moscardo family, and they could not be here today. Sharing, Sharon, is an ambassador and off, often a walking billboard, having recruited many families as breeder caretakers and volunteers for Canine Companions. Thank you, Mosbau family, and thank you, Team Phoenix. <laughs> Introducing Ritzy. She's pretty Ritzy, like, like her name, as you can see. Ritzy is also a female lab golden cross. She was raised by Sue Schmidt, initials SS, of the Southwest region. Sue is a five-time puppy raiser with all five becoming graduates or breeders. Ritzy was placed with first-time breeder caretaker Susan Schaefer, also initials SS. Sue has already helped Susan <laughs> give by giving her an immersion in all things canine companions. Thank you both and welcome Team Ritzy. <laughs> and last but not least, introducing Wendy the Third, also a female lab golden cross. Wendy was raised by local veterinarian and longtime puppy raiser and volunteer Darcy Atterbury. Darcy has raised two puppies, both of them becoming breeders. So this is her second breeder. Darcy is presenting Wendy with her whelper helper and best friend Susie Hoppy. Wendy has had a bit of a head start having already delivered seven healthy puppies just a few months ago. Thank you and welcome Team Wendy. Now, please turn your attention to the Puppy Raiser slideshow, followed by a class introduction by our puppy program manager, Susan Porteous. Thank you.
everybody. Uh, as Ashley said, my name is Susan Porteous. I'm the Northwest Puppy Program Manager. Uh, puppy raisers of the matriculating dogs, will you please begin quietly lining up along the left side of the room, along the far ramp. And I would also like to ask our guests from Hansel Subaru to please join me on stage again uh, as they present the rosette to our matriculating dogs. volunteer puppy raisers across our six regions, today is a bittersweet day. Over the past year and a half, they've socialized, trained, and cared for those adorable little puppies that we just saw in the slideshow, and somehow in the blink of an eye, they turned into adult dogs ready to begin the next chapter in their lives. It's hard to imagine the wide range of emotions as our puppy raisers are feeling today. There's incredible love for that puppy walking beside them, wearing blue for the very first time, a sense of pride in everything they've accomplished together so far, sadness as they prepare to say goodbye for now, and hope for what the future has in store. Bittersweet is a bit of an understatement. As we celebrate International Assistance Dog Week this week, and all the incredible things that our dogs can do for people with disabilities, we cannot say enough about the role that our puppy raisers play in making this possible. Thank you for all the tears, all the smiles, and every moment in between. We absolutely could not do this without you. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to introduce the matriculating class of August 2019. If our first puppy is ready, come on down. This is Abby the Second, raised by the Bashaw family of Moscow, Idaho. This is their first puppy. Next is Annabelle the Second, who is at the kennels in season, raised by Lisa Reed of Los Altos, California, her third puppy. This is Augustus II, raised by John and Karen Elliott and Pete Allen of Everett, Washington. John and Karen's seventh puppy and Pete's eighth. Next is Bijou III, raised by Sydney Walters of Bellevue, Washington, her first puppy. And we have Agatha II, first puppy raised by Kayla Mercado of Roseville, California. And Brendan II, raised by Sarah Lee and Judy Friedman of Folsom, California. This is their sixth puppy. And here we have Bria the Fourth, raised by Rebecca, Mark, and Kristen Kearney of Vallejo, California, their tenth puppy. This is Brick the Second, raised by Marty Sullivan and Daisy Lord of Woodenville, Washington. He is their fifth puppy. And Captain the Sixth, raised by Coffee Creek Correctional Facility with Marcy and Terry Pfaff of Portland. This is Coffee Creek's 140th puppy. And Karina the Second is also in season at the kennels. She is the second puppy raised by Bailey and Jackson Parks of Fresno, California. This is Casey the Sixth, the 17th puppy raised by Rudy and Sherry Van Pelt, and fifth by Nancy Misseldean of Fremont, California. <laughs> Next up we have Cupcake, raised by Jim Dempsey and Linnea Lofchi of Sebastopol, California. This is their first puppy. 
and Delphi the Third, raised by Jill, John, Owen, and Chris Lipel of San Jose, California. This is their eighth puppy. This is Dern, raised by Aaron Bateser of Scotts Valley, California. He is Aaron's fifth puppy. And Drover, raised by Sharon Steffens of Shingle Springs, California, her sixth puppy. This is Ellen the Sixth, raised by Ashley Tomlinson of Boise, Idaho, and this is her eighth puppy. And Erica the Fifth, raised by Sherry and Craig Rodenberger of San Jose, California, their third puppy. And Estes the Second, raised by Coffee Creek Correctional Facility with Christina Keith of Portland, Oregon, Coffee Creek's 138th puppy. This is Eugenia the Third, raised by Cheryl, Chris, and Andrea Sherry of Danville, California, their first puppy. And this is Fiddler the Second, raised by Nick and Nate Ortiz of Elk Grove, California, their fourth puppy. This is Freesia the Fourth, raised by Mary and Richard Rosso of Arnold, California, their second puppy. And here we have Hayden the Fourth, raised by Rebecca, Doug, and Molly Anderson of Fremont, California, their fifth puppy. Hickory the Fourth, raised by Rafaela, Isabella, Lucia, Herb, and Jan of Kenmore, Washington, their second puppy. This is Highlight, raised by Abby and Olivia Johnson of Rancho Cordova, California. Highlight is their fourth puppy. And Jaxum, raised by a California healthcare facility of Stockton, California, with Mary Jo Coletti of Auburn, California. This is Mary Jo's sixth puppy. This is Java the Eighth, raised by Heather Feek and Lee Hardwick of Eureka, California, their first puppy. Next up is Jolie the second, raised by John and Allison Dunseth of Santa Rosa, California, their first puppy. This is Jordy the second, raised by Karen Riggs of Fair Oaks, California, her second puppy. <laughs> and Jocelyn is back at the kennels in season. She was raised by Katrin Spilby and Ariana Kaufman of Viola, Idaho, their 11th puppy. And Knight the Fifth, raised by Carly and Hazel Firmer of Shingle Springs, California, Carly's 12th puppy. And Lemming, raised by Mark and Debbie Steffens of Sacramento, California, their 20th puppy. And this is Maestro the Second, raised by Kyla and Carissa Mayer of Seattle, Washington, their fourth puppy. Next is Napoleon the Third, raised by Esther and Leslie Nelson of Novato, California, their second puppy. And next we have Scooby, raised by Michael and Jessica Lester of Millbrae, California. She is their first puppy. And this is Celie the Third, raised by Marianne Coletta of Folsom, California, her first puppy. And this is Sabella, raised by the Pollock family of Sacramento, California, their first puppy. Yeah. Next up is Spoto, raised by Folsom Women's Correctional Facility of Folsom, California, with Holt Get It, Sarah Aikenhead, and Lily Newman of Rockland, California. Next, we have Tally the Fourth, raised by Paul and Mia Takakawa of Sacramento, California, their fourth puppy. Next, we have Teak, raised by Robin and Lara Hudson of North Bend, Washington, their eighth puppy. 
And this is Thimble, raised by Tracy Stafford and Nancy Eklund of Seattle, Washington, their second puppy. And Veronica, or Victoria V, raised by Veronica Anisenko of Roseville, California, her first puppy. And this is Walla, raised by Roxanne and Lowell Walmsley and Rebecca DeShaw of Seattle, Washington. They were unable to be here, so she's being presented by her breeder caretaker, Mary Lowe. <laughs> and Winfield, raised by Mike and Nancy Mills of Sacramento, California. She is their first puppy. And Yacht the second, raised by James and Cheryl Gregory of Red Bluff, California, their seventh puppy. And next we have Yardley the Fourth, raised by Lori Clark of Santa Rosa, California. He is her third puppy. And Yola the Third, raised by Karen and Roy Pearson of Discovery Bay, California, their first puppy. And Yulia the Second, raised by Dan DeMund and Lydia DeMund of Sacramento, California, their second puppy. And last but not least, we have Zaria, raised by Amy Mall and Bill Knowlton of Boise, Idaho, their fourth puppy. Congratulations and thank you again, puppy raisers. Now, please welcome Northwest Program Director Kim Mizia to the stage for a special presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Susan. Like she said, my name is Kim Mizia, and I am the Northwest Region Program Director. It is my pleasure to introduce to you today two of Canine Companion's newest apprentice instructors. I'd like to please invite Kate Nevers and Troy Schnackenberg up to stage. <laughs> For the past six months, Kate and Troy have been training their very first group of assistance dogs in what we call the apprentice course. Today, we celebrate the completion of that course. Several of the dogs you will soon see on stage were trained by Kate and Troy and I know their new graduates appreciate all the hard work they've put into these dogs. <laughs> Throughout the past six months, Kate and Troy have been enthusiastic and eager to learn. They put their heart into learning not only dog training skills, but also how to work with and to support our students. We can count on Kate to volunteer for every opportunity that comes her way, and she always has a smile on her face. Troy is equally as eager to help out and is known for his insightful questions and his never stop learning attitude. We are so proud of all they have accomplished so far and can't wait to see what the future holds for them. The end of this apprentice course also marks the beginning of the rest of their three year apprenticeship. The Northwest region is thrilled to be keeping both Kate and Troy as a part of our team. <laughs> Please join me in one, round, one more round of applause to congratulate them. And now please enjoy a team training video.
have the students, soon to be graduates, line up along the left side of the stage on the ramp, and puppy raisers line up to the right side of the stage. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe, and I'm an apprentice instructor, and I was one of the trainers in this uh, current class. On behalf of the entire staff here at K-9 Companions for Independence, it is my honor to welcome you to our August 2019 graduation. We are here today to celebrate 11 new teams who have excelled through the past two weeks and dealt with my nonstop talking, instruction, and feedback. They have learned and grown and are now well prepared to move into the real world with their dogs. But I was promised a microphone and a spotlight, so they're gonna have to wait two more minutes. Starting from handlers who are nervous to tell a roll of carpet to sit, they are now confident and highly trained assistance dog handlers and it has been my pleasure to witness this transformation. As these students cross the stage and have the leash of their service dog passed to them, they are just starting their journey with canine companions and our wonderful family. This organization and our extensive family is filled to the brim with passionate and dedicated people who make our mission possible. I'd like to take a moment to thank all the volunteer breeder caretakers, puppy raisers, dog walkers and bathers, and lunch volunteers who care for these dogs and the students at every step and without whom this day could not happen. I also want to thank the many donors who ensure that we can continu continue to do our jobs to make these amazing matches free of charge for the graduates. And lastly, I want to thank all of my coworkers who work tireless tirelessly every day to train and care for these dogs and live out the ideals of our organization. Congratulations to all our new graduate team. I am so proud of each of you and I'm beyond excited to hear about all of the amazing things you do with your new forever friends. I would like to invite Glenn to center stage, please. Glenn has been placed with service dog Poncho the First, a male Labrador retriever. Glenn came to class looking for a dog to turn on lights and pick up dropped items for him. During a motivation game, we challenged everyone to get a bit silly with their praise to engage a dog, and Glenn surprised us by letting out such a perfect whistle, it snapped all the humans in the room to attention. The trainers loved getting to hear Glenn's booming and sincere praise with a voice that could narrate books on tape, and knew we needed a stately dog to be his perfect match. Glenn loved Poncho's easygoing, responsive, and affectionate nature, and Honcho loves the gentle head pats he gets from Glenn whenever he does the right thing. It has been a privilege to watch the bond between Glenn and Honcho grow throughout class, and we could not be more excited for their future together. Honcho was raised at the Folsom Woman's Correctional Facility and co-raised by Kathy Hall of Placerville, California. He is being presented today by his breeder caretaker, Kristen Sisko. Honcho is a third puppy raised by Kathy. Congratulations, service team, Glenn and Honcho. <laughs> I'd like to invite Dorothy to center stage, please. <laughs> Dorothy has been placed with successor service dog, Tanvir the First, a male lab golden cross. As a successor, Dorothy came to class full of ideas for the way a new service dog could help her be more independent. All the trainers loved her thoughtful questions and reasoned expectations and knew we needed a calm and inquisitive dog to match her personality. Tanvir is the perfect fit for Dorothy's life as he gently tilts his head to listen to commands and shines under her sincere praise. Dorothy loves Tanvir's willing and eager to please nature and the way his body wiggles when she motivates him. Tanvir is being presented today by his puppy raiser, Millie Bowens of Vancouver, Washington. Tanvir is the seventh puppy she has raised and she is working on number eight. Congratulations to successor service team, Dorothy and Tanvir. I'd like to invite Angela to center stage, please. Angela has been placed with service dog, Quake the Second, a male lab golden cross. Angela enjoys a quiet lifestyle filled with arts and crafts, jigsaw puzzles, and weekly outings to the MS Achievement Center in Sacramento where she heard about canine companions through a friend who has a facility dog. Angela came to team training hoping for a dog to help her take fresh clothes out of the dryer, pick up dropped items, help her open the fridge, and conserve her energy by pulling her in her chair. 
According to Angela, cake is the perfect match, and we agree with the way her praise gets us tail to wag so hard the earth trembles. Quake's goofy, affectionate demeanor is a wonderful compliment to Angela's calm, relaxed nature. Over the past two weeks, we have watched our confidence and skills blossom. With Quake, Angela will enjoy a greater sense of independence as well as a nice cool breeze as Quake pulls her along in her chair. Quake is being presented today by his puppy raisers, Debbie, Allie, Maddie, Kathy, and Ken of Sacramento, California. Quake was the seventh puppy raised by Debbie and she is currently working on number eight. Congratulations, service team, Angela and Quake. <laughs> I'd like to invite Nancy to center stage, please. Nancy has been placed with successor service dog, Buzz the Second, a male lab golden cross. Nancy is another one of our class successors and told us she enjoys reading, volunteering, and camping with her partner, Ken, in her spare time. Buzz will help Nancy open doors and pick up dropped items, but mostly, Buzz will provide love and a sense of safety for Nancy while she is out and about. The connection between these two was instant. You might even say it was love at first sight. Nancy's joyful and affectionate nature matches that of Buzz, who loves to cuddle and lay his head on Nancy's lap at every given opportunity. Though they've only been together for two weeks, we can already tell that together, Nancy and Buzz will achieve greatness, and the possibilities for this team are to infinity and beyond. Buzz was raised at Coffee Creek Correctional Facility in Wilsonville, Oregon, and was co-puppy raised by Christina Keith of Portland, Oregon. Buzz is the fourth puppy that Christina has raised, and the 134th puppy from Coffee Creek. Congratulations, successor service team, Nancy and Buzz. I'd like to invite Lee to center stage, please. <laughs> Lee has been placed with service dog, Habiki the First, a male lab golden cross. Since day one, Habiki and Lee have been working side by side like a match made in heaven. Habiki's mellow and focused demeanor is perfect for Lee, and the trainers love seeing them so in stride. On the day before pre-matches, we asked the students if any dogs or their temperaments had stood out to them, and Lee was quick to name Habiki. When asked what he liked about Habiki, Lee said without hesitation, oh, just everything about him. Lee and Habiki will have fun hanging at the park and attending car shows by Cheryl Louise of Santa Rosa, California. Habiki is being presented by Susan Case, the puppy coordinator at Crossroads. He is the fourth puppy Cheryl has raised and the 97th puppy raised at Crossroads currently. <laughs> Congratulations, service team Lee and Habiki. I would now like to invite my fellow apprentice instructor, Kate Nevers, back to the stage to present the second half of our class. Thank you, Jay. I would like to invite Tiffany to center stage, please. <laughs> Tiffany has been placed with successor service dog, D the second, a female Labrador retriever. Tiffany has been a member of our Gold Rush chapter for many years, and she enjoys volunteering not only with canine companions, but also at schools, offices, and raising funds for silent auctions and raffle baskets. Tiffany is also a huge theater buff and is a season ticket holder at not one, but two theaters. When Tiffany came to us looking for a dog to help pick up dropped items and learn the go-to command, we decided she would be a perfect match with little Bumblebee. With Tiffany, Dee will have the pleasure of attending Broadway shows, new plays, and live music. Tiffany's experienced handling style and Dee's willingness to please have begun to blossom over these past two weeks, and we are so excited for their future together. 
In Tiffany's own words, I look forward to learning and becoming a wonderful tea with my sweet new service dog, Z. <laughs> Z is being presented today by her puppy raiser, Aletha Bowman of Folsom, California. Z was the second puppy she has raised. Congratulations, successor service team, Tiffany and Z. Next, I would like to invite Pam to center stage. Pam has been placed with service dog Talene the First, a female lab golden cross. Pam came to class looking for a dog to get items out of the refrigerator, help her with laundry, and turn lights on and off. Skills aside, Pam was also hoping for a dog who enjoys physical praise and likes to lean. After seeing Pam's cool and confident handling style, we realized there was no dog more perfect for her than Talene, who, yes folks, loves Talene. With Talene by her side, Pam will have a companion to help her fold laundry, turn the lights off before bed, but perhaps most importantly, Talene will provide a never-ending sight for sore eyes as she contorts herself into upside down, backwards, flipsy flopsy positions. This girl can fall asleep no matter where she is. Pam and Talene have just begun their journey together, and we are so proud and excited for will, where they will take each other. Talene is being presented today by her puppy raiser, Christiana Barton of Mather, California. Talene was the first puppy she has raised. Congratulations, service team Pam and Talene. I would like to invite Becky to center stage, please. Becky has been matched with service dog Daring the First, a male lab golden cross. Becky is joining us from SeaTac, Washington, previously from the Chicago area where she had obtained a degree in health information technology and music education. Becky has said that she enjoys music and theater and also loves camping and takes part in the Outdoors for All organization. Daring will be a great addition to her life, helping her pick up dropped items, pull her wheelchair a short distance, and opening doors, both literally and figuratively. Seeing Daring curl up in Becky's lap while doing homework or taking a nap has been simply heartwarming, and the pair have soared through this team together. In Becky's own words, Daring will give her the opportunity to be as independent as possible and just participate in life again. Daring was raised in the Crossroads Correctional Facility in Shelby, Montana. Presenting Daring today is Iris Yamaguchi and Cindy Thomas, this is the ninth dog that they have finished and Crossroads Correctional Facility's 98th dog. Congratulations, service team Becky and Daring. Next, I'd like to invite Lisa to center stage, please. Lisa has been placed with service dog Kenna the Fourth, a female lab golden cross. Lisa lives in Portland, Oregon, originally hailing from Maine. That's the accent. From the very beginning, Lisa expressed feeling an immediate attachment to Kenna from the moment they first locked eyes and Kenna gave her a kiss on the chin. Over the course of the two weeks 
the pair have bonded even more with Kenna's multitude of kisses and Lisa's loving, excited purrs. Kenna is going to help Lisa with laundry, turning lights on and off, and give Lisa the independence to follow her passion for photography. Lisa has expressed over and over just how in love with Kenna she is and that Kenna is an incredible gift and her dream job. Lisa, who likes to do everything perfect the first time, has had a great time learning and working alongside Kenna, and together the pair will be able to take on any challenge that comes their way. Presenting Kenna today is her puppy raisers, Joe and Chad Combis of Plain Heart, California. Kenna is the second puppy that they have raised, and they are currently working on puppy number three. Congratulations, service team Lisa and Kenna. I'd like to invite Sean to center stage, please. Sean has been placed with service dog Trebby II, a female lab golden cross. Sean is an ambitious young man with big dreams to travel and become an actor. He's presently a student at the College of Marin, where he and Trevi will be seen studying together on a regular basis. Sean shared with us that on their first night together, Trevi was snoring and burping through the night. And then his mom shared with us that after their first weekend together, Sean had decided to join in with the snoring. Trevi will make Sean's life happier and easier by picking up dropped items and acting as a social bridge throughout his college years and beyond. We can't wait to watch Sean's independence grow with Trevi by his side, and we are so excited to see what life has in store for this wonderful team. Presenting Trevi today is her puppy raisers Bambi, Kaplan, and Bill Weisband of Sebastopol, California. Bambi has raised six puppies. Congratulations, service team, Sean and Trevi. And next, I'd like to invite Sylvia to the stage, please. Lab Golden Cross. Sylvia is quite the accomplished young lady. She is a Muscular Dystrophy Association Goodwill Ambassador, a UCSF Benioff Youth Advisory Council member, and participates in Mock Trial and Leadership in School. It came as no surprise to us to hear that this incredibly smart and put together 18 year old was accepted to none other than Stanford University where she will be attending school this coming fall. Nicola will help increase Sylvia's confidence and independence as she navigates through the new experience of college life and give her a great feeling of safety and security. When Sylvia and little Nickel Pickle were matched, we enjoyed hearing her exclaim about how beautiful and pretty she was, and with Sylvia's exceptional handling, the two have blossomed throughout these past two weeks. Nicola and Sylvia graduate today as a service dog team, and next, Sylvia will graduate from college with Nicola by her side. Presenting Nicola, <laughs> presenting Nicola today is her puppy raiser, Taylor Schaefer from Pullman, Washington. Nicola is the first puppy that she has raised. Congratulations, service team, Sylvia and Nicola. Next, I have the great pleasure to introduce Northwest board member and veteran graduate, Randy White with Service Dog Neo for a special presentation.
as you were told, my name is Randy Ellis, and I serve on the National Board of Fire and Northwest Research Board for Twin Lakes Primary School Chemistry. I am also a graduate of this program, as my service dog, Mia, has graduated about seven years ago from the program, and I'm also a Navy veteran. Since our founding, Canine Companion has been proud to place our assisted club with veterans with disabilities. We present each veteran graduate with a challenge point. In the military, they are used to build unit camaraderie, cohesiveness, loyalty, and to improve morale. present a challenge point to Lee, who are, I have been told has served in the United States Air Force and is also a Vietnam veteran. Welcome. <laughs> Neil, Sam. Thank you, Randy and Lee, for your many years of service. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to invite Sylvia back up front. Sylvia has been chosen as our class speaker and will share a little bit about her time in team service. This was incredibly exciting news that turned my life and plans for the future upside down. I'm attending Stanford in the fall and moving out. This will be my first time in my life that I'm receiving care from someone who is not my mom. Going to college is scary. <laughs> I'm worried that I won't be able to keep up back home, that I won't make friends, that I'll be lonely. But I'm also worried about managing my new care team, my employees, and that my wheelchair and disability will interfere with my ability to make friends and meet new people. So when I got a phone call from Canine Companion from my stay, my reaction wasn't excitement, it was fear. How in the world was I going to have a team manage to keep my care and be responsible for a new dog? I was in shock. Wasn't it, wa I wasn't close enough to witness one of those years. How could I possibly deal with this too? Despite this, I didn't want to pass up on this opportunity. 
one that I've been working towards for years. So I came to Kingdom and instantly realized how wrong I was. Yes, my new service, God Can't Fill Up, will be my responsibility. Yes, I'll have to make sure to get food and exercise and grooming for me. But he is going to give me so much more than that. Nicola will give me a sense of security and of independence that I've never felt before. I no longer need to be afraid of being left alone because that I know that if I drop something, she'll be there. I know that I no longer need to be worried when I'm walking on campus at night alone because she'll be there. I don't need to be worried about the days where I'm feeling particularly lonely because she'll be there. I can't believe I was worried that she would be too much work. How could I not see that she would change my life? How could I not see that her abilities and personality would impact me so profoundly? Nicola and I are going to be college gals, and we are ready to take on Stanford and any challenges that may arise. exhausting and mostly draining and inspiring and eye-opening. I've had those dogs my entire life, and I really had no idea, idea the potential that these animals have. I've met so many charismatic and interesting people from all over the world. We all have different backgrounds and passions and professions, but we are all united by this unique experience. This entire experience and this ma these amazing assistance dogs would not be possible without the wonderful puppy raisers who worked so hard to build their foundation and the volunteers who gave us their time and gratitude. Thank you to my team for giving me and Sandy the other freedom and especially thank you, Nicola, for showing me what's possible when you ask. when I thought the emotions were like under control again. <laughs> Sylvia, thank you so much for sharing on behalf of the class. And thank you to everybody here for joining us again today. We truly appreciated you taking your time on this lovely Friday. Um, if you're new, all those hands that went up earlier, please feel free to always come to our campus, take a tour. Um, make sure you stop by the table in the back and let us know who you are. We'd be happy to tell you about the other amazing events that we have. Also, anybody here can vote for the puppy calendar cover, which is super fun. That's in the back as well. For graduates, there are pictures outside. And you can also, everybody um, is welcome to have some refreshments outside as well and just enjoy this beautiful day. As puppy raisers and graduates say to their dogs when it's time to play, release. Thank you.